All right, today I'm going to be reacting to Fleet Fox's self-titled album. Uh, it came out in 2008. I have heard uh, Helplessness Blues by Fleet Foxes. I absolutely loved that album. I enjoyed it on a first listen. It's I've it's grown on me even more since then. Make sure to go join the Patreon if you want to see this reaction uncut. I'll have a link in the description down below where you can go join that. Uh, there's also an $8 tier where you can uh, request albums. So, uh consider joining that if you want and uh yeah we're gonna hop into it the first track is sun it rises Very kind of unsettling dissonance there. This is interesting because we didn't have, I don't think, any electric guitar in Helplessness Blues. Great vocal there in. I love the panning too. Great panning of the vocals. You got one here, you got one here, one voice in the middle. Mm. That was great. That was fantastic. I mean, it had the elements that I loved in Helplessness Blues, but again, they do add that electric guitar in there, which makes it feel a little bit distinct from pretty much anything on that album. Um, obviously, it's very similar in terms of the reverby, but very natural re reverb sound, very massive, very kind of choral in a way, uh, especially with the, the vocal layering um, of his voice. It just feels like kind of a, a choir of, uh, of vocals and it, it. I don't know. It has almost like a, that one ha almost had like a, a religious feel to it, but like not in any like preachy, annoying way, just like kind of a very natural and just very like almost angelic, I guess, type of vibe is the word I'm looking for. Yeah, that was great. Let's keep it going. I love how it's so subtly just goes into the actual chorus, I guess they're calling it. Oh, love that vocal melody synced up with the, in unison with the guitar. Love how it's mixed. Okay. I love the phrasing. I love the shape of that vocal melody. Just a little breath there. Really, really satisfying and interesting vocal phrasing. Um, a pretty simple instrumental, I feel like. You just have the rhythm guitar, some tambourines in there. Uh, very reverby and uh, natural and in the room and... Uh, sounding drums as well, but I feel like the vocal harmonies and that guitar line really steal the steal the uh, the show there. Um, really catchy, surprisingly catchy on that one, um, and it makes sense why it has 175 million streams. So, yeah, that was enjoyable. Let's keep it going. Vocal performance on this one. Nice little bass lick there. I'm 
loving the dynamics of his voice on this this track and this album in general. He's got a really nice push and pull to his voice. Did not expect this little. It's not really a bridge. It's just kind of a complete switch up. Beautiful organ in there. Beautiful. Beautiful. They do such a great, obviously their music has a very folky feel to it, but they also do a great job of incorporating really interesting and uh, almost soulful and almost jazzy kind of chords that are just full of, of color. Um, like especially that last kind of uh, the harmonies and then the organ in there really create an interesting uh, chord, I guess. Um, that was my favorite track. I feel like that was the most complete track with the best songwriting so far. The other tracks were great. They just felt a little bit, uh, a little bit underdeveloped in comparison to this song. This song went through a bunch of phases. It came back around in a nice way, and I absolutely loved the push and pull of his vocals on this track. Um, yeah, that was fantastic. Really loved it. I'm loving the the shaping of these tracks where they kind of go in these these valleys, and then they reach these peaks, these blissful shots and they're often highlighted by like a crash here or a certain him kind of emphasizing his vocals in a certain way to kind of highlight it um overall every track has had a really nice uh kind of movement to it Wanderers this morning came by where do they go graceful in the morning light to bang I feel like I've heard this this melody Here, the vocal processing is a bit different on that. Mm. It feels a bit darker, a bit more moody, and kind of gloomy. I was so lost, I haven't even been following the lyrics. I was just lost in it. Oh, he, the, the way he fades away there. He kind of feels like a, a tortured soul in this track. I don't know if the lyrics reflect that, because again, I wasn't... I mean, it looks like the lyrics kind of uh, reflect that vibe. A very... a sense of just being trapped, almost. I do not know you anymore, dear shadow alive. How can the body die? You tell me everything, anything true. Yeah, that one, that one had a weird, like, otherworldly quality to it. I don't know if exactly what this track is about lyrically, but I feel like that I'm kind of on the right track. I don't know. Uh, that one's just a little bit more gloomy, a little bit more moody. Yeah, it's crazy how they can make folk music feel so otherworldly. I was thinking earlier, like, how... Because last, a couple months ago, I listened to, like, a, a Lumineers album. Yes, I know, the Lumineers. Um, and it was, you could, and even, like, the Mumford and & Sons and bands like that, 
you can tell how they pull influence from this, but they just do it in the most like soulless and uh, overblown and just kind of, it kind of just loses all the charm of what Fleet Foxes is doing here. So I, I really respect how otherworldly and how to kind of alien they make this very traditional kind of folk music feel. It's, it's really cool. So uh, yeah, let's keep it going. Quiet Houses. Oh, beautiful finesse on the guitar parts here. Oh, interesting. Interplay between that guitar and bass and the piano. Mm. It does feel a little bit robotic rhythmically, which I don't love. That track's interesting because it really doesn't place the emphasis on the vocals. The vocals are just kind of another layer to the instrumentation here. But I do feel like it had its moments, um, definitely. Like the intricate finger-picked guitar is very bright and uh, very uh, colorful at the beginning there. Um, but then towards the end, I feel like it got a little bit robotic, robotic rhythmically. So there's some aspects I like. There's some, some aspects I don't really enjoy. I think that's probably my least favorite so far. I feel like it's an interesting track to have in this because it does, again, take away the emphasis from the vocals, but uh, just uh, a couple aspects that kind of throw me off a bit. I love how he pronounces certain certain sounds like that didn't Cascading vocals. Beautiful. So euphoric. Beautiful tone to that piano. Oh, let's keep it going. That was fantastic. how reverby that piano is electric piano
Yes. I love the keeping the, the pickups of the guitar and just all those little blemishes. It's a very subtle thing, but it's a conscious decision to leave those in that really adds to the uh, aesthetic. Uh, that was fantastic. That was really, really great. I was just thinking during that track how interesting the percussion elements of this album, and I guess just Fleet Fox's music in general, or at least the stuff I've heard, is. It's very, there's no like big snares, there's nothing really punchy, there's no prominent kick, snare, rhythm. It's just a lot of shakers, it's a lot of tambourines. Yes, there's some crashes, there are some big boomy kicks, but they're all kind of subdued and all kind of blanketed in a nice way to make them feel soft. Um, and it really puts the the emphasis on just all the textures the guitars the vocals are obviously a huge forefront of the mix and they take up a lot of the mix i feel like if you had something super punchy to come in a super punchy snare that was super prominent and loud it just wouldn't really work the drums are just as much a texture and more just like a, a layer rather than having a, a really strong rhythmic feel to them. I mean, it, there it is still rhythmically interesting and it still does have a pulse to it, but I don't know, it's kind of just a lot more made up with the strumming of guitars and stuff like that rather than uh, traditionally prominent and uh, super uh, just kind of standard drums. So I feel like that track was a great example of that and uh, yeah, really enjoyable. Let's keep going. Nice pan flute. Is that a pan flute? Right? There's that organ again. Again, this kind of religious gospel almost influence. Nice harmony, additive harmonies there. See what I mean? Drums, very wide, but not very direct. Keep it going. Oh, that, oh, the resonance on that bass, on those lower frequencies. Beautiful chord. Oh, oh great progression. Oh, it's like almost a Chico Aoba reminiscent. Pretty sure this came before to Chico Aoba though. Beautiful. 
beautiful. Love keeping that root note. Let's switch it up there. Ugh. This is the hummingbird singing. Very intimate. Almost like a lullaby. That's easily my favorite track so far. Uh, I just love the musicality on that track. I think it's the most interesting musically. The chord progression is just so emotive and the mixing is very intimate. It has this somber but also kind of lullaby-esque feel to it that's really calming and really gentle but has a little bit of darkness to it as well. Yeah, that is fantastic. I love the, the, the details on the guitar part there. Again, I love the mix. I love how soft it is. Just, just fantastic. Easily, easily my favorite. It's not the most explosive on here. It's not the most like in your face and uh, up front, but I feel like it really shines with its nuance, its subtleties and its detail. Blue Ridge Mountains. I may have heard this track, I'm gonna be honest. I feel like this has come on, like I, after listening to Helplessness Blues, you know how Spotify just plays tracks that are related to the album. I think this came on and I think I listened to it, um, so I'm pretty sure I've heard this. Yeah, I've heard this. Oh, was that? That is just, oh, that's genius. Here's something being moved in the studio. Listen to that. You hear that? Most albums would take that up. Right there. Just subtle, the creaks of a floorboard or something. Just a very subtle room sound that kind of just puts you, puts you in this, in this atmosphere, in this place. <laughs> Oh, come on. Over near Tennessee. That chord. Blue Ridge. That was bad. Ignore that. No. But Sean don't get careless. Oh. I'm sure it's. See what I mean? Those jazzy chords. Here's that phrasing I was talking about again. Great chorus. Oh, it just 
got chills. That might be my favorite, actually. Maybe it's because I've already heard it before, but I think that might be my favorite. It incorporated the jazzy chords that I love, the very colorful and emotive chords, but also paired it with some classic, classic Fleet Foxes, just kind of shots of color and euphoria and just amazing stuff. There you go. A great, great vocal phrasing again, kind of similar to what I was talking about earlier where he just emphasizes certain words in such a unique way. Yeah, fantastic. Last track is Oliver James. Oh, come on. Tap that guitar. Hit it, boy. <laughs> That's so cringe. Bro, his voice is so angelic right now. See what I mean with the dynamics? Ending it with just a cappella is feels like such a, a more powerful ending than any very grand, very explosive kind of finish to this album. Um, I love the choice to keep it simple there and really let his vocals shine because he is such a talented vocalist. I didn't really appreciate his vocals on that first album, I think, as much as I should have. I definitely did on this one here because the way he just very cleanly but also full of emotion hits those notes in his higher register again the dynamics he just has great control over his voice i feel like that would be the best way to describe it just the phrasing the shaping the emphasis on certain words and vowels and even the way he pronounces certain things whether he opens his mouth a little bit wider to make the sound a little bit brighter on certain vowels or certain sounds um it just makes it feel really unique and uh stand out there's a lot of a lot of detail to his vocal performances and like i said keeping it simple on that last one really lets that vocal performance shine that was great that was another one of my favorites this album i feel like ended off stronger than it started definitely um i mean the start was still pretty pretty solid but i feel like it really um i feel like the ending was a little bit more simplistic and more stripped back but it was really powerful as well um overall this album was fantastic again i don't know if i prefer this over helplessness blues yet either way i mean it's it's just fantastic i absolutely love fleet fox's sound it's just this otherworldly almost alien uh version of folk that is just very interesting it's very it's extremely well done too like with this much reverb and this much atmosphere um, I feel like things could get muddy and really washed out really easily, but they mix it in such a way that it just, it never gets to that point for me. So yeah, this was, this was fantastic. This was Fleet Fox's self-titled. Let me know your thoughts on it down below. Let me know which one you prefer, this or helpless, Helplessness Blues. Let me know if I missed anything lyrically, because I, I do, uh, I gotta admit that I wasn't really following the lyrics probably as much as I should have, but... Uh, just the sound really took me away on this one. So yeah, that's going to do it. Those are my thoughts. Go join the Patreon if you, if you want to see this reaction uncut. And uh, leave a like if you want. Subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.